All right, we're going live. Amen. Shango like a boom boom. That's baby. Hey, that's right. That's right. All right, here we go. We're in we're live and in living color. Amen. We are right here, ready, doing what the Lord God Almighty has called us to do, required Amen. us to do. We are coming together. Uh, not forsaking the fellowship, the assembly of the saints. We are literally uh, seeking his face, his will for our lives as we are coming together. And we believe that here at Bible study, God does an awesome, amazing, and incredible thing in our midst. Amen. Just want to make sure that we are we we're, we're we're good on on uh, I've got another computer up. I just want to make sure we're good as we're as streaming. Amen. Praise God. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead have our opening word of prayer and then we will move into our Q&A session and then from there we'll go and get into our lesson. In fact, Amen. brother Sean, do me a favor, because I, I I I I spend the whole basic whole time talking. Uh, help me out here. Could you could you open us up with a word of prayer? Yes, sir. No problem. Let us thank pray. You. God, again, we thank you for the privilege of this, just to be able to pray. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are still sustaining us, keeping us, Lord, to continue to watch over us and protect us. We thank you, Lord, that we are. Uh, hearts have been uh, tuned into this Wednesday Bible study. Thank the Lord for us. Lord, for the hours that he has studied, he has prepared to be able to uh, communicate to us, uh, not only from the book, but also to respond to any question or concerns we may have. I thank you. Thank the Lord for you being a God all by yourself. Thank the Lord that you are a all-seeing, all-knowing God. Pray, Lord, as we uh, communicate uh, this afternoon, Lord, that you would be with all those who will be tuning in, whatever questions mm -hmm. they may have, that they'll be able to be uh, answered either this week or a week to follow. But more importantly, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for you are faithful. Help us, Lord, to be more faithful than we have been. Help us, Lord, to be uh, encouraging, more loving, more uh, just being able to uh, share with others the goodness of God. Pray, Lord, for those individuals that as we tune, tune into the news. So much is happening, especially overseas. Ukraine, Lord, we pray, Lord, lives are being lost now and there, over there, but even over here, immigrants, yeah. Yeah. Uh, shelters uh, are over, are over uh, loaded, Lord, food pantries, so, so, you know, individuals that are supplying food, uh, as soon as the food is going out more so than it's coming in. But more importantly, Lord, I pray, Lord, that us who, are, uh, or, uh, or you who call ourselves yours would be a help and a blessing to those who are less fortunate than themselves. Yeah. Be with us, Lord, uh, this uh, Wednesday afternoon. Help us, Lord, to know who we are and whose we are. Lord, we are an example. We are a, we should also be ambassadors for you wherever we go and whatever we say. It's in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Deacon Sean. I really appreciate that. Amen. I, I, I love to hear you pray. Amen. I, I just, it's just so edifying and it's so encouraging. Um, because you 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 hear the sincerity in the prayer, Amen. Praise God. Uh, good good afternoon, Brother Gregory. Amen. Brother Gregory is joining us on Facebook Live. Amen. I know Pastor Kevin uh, is joining us as well. Uh, I, I'm sure Sister Kristen would be online, and other people will be joining us soon. Amen. Praise God. Let me begin our Q&A session by, I just want to reiterate something to us. Mm -hmm. um, it is imperative mm -hmm. that we are fasting together on these Wednesdays from 12 mm -hmm. to 1. Well, now I know that you're I'm fasting. The two of us are fasting. Sister Sharon is fasting because we're all here at Bible study. We're, we're engaged in Bible study. So, uh, but uh, I, I wonder if all of us are fasting as we should be. And the reason why I say this is anytime in the Bible 
when you see the people fast, God is moved into action almost immediately. Mm -hmm. That's because what God sees is our willingness to forsake something that we want, our willingness to give up something that we think we need in order to have more of him. And I know uh, we've got some prayer requests, some issues at our church. I know that other people, churches have prayer requests, issues. We got other churches that participate in this Bible study with us. And I just believe that if we were all fasting as required, mm. we would be seeing God move Amen. a little faster mm -hmm. and a little more uh, powerful than we are. And so the question that arises is, if, if God is not moving, it cannot be because God doesn't want to move. This is what God is in the business of doing, moving on behalf of his people. That we have to look at ourselves. And I just want us to really become more intentional about fasting. Yeah. We've chosen one hour a week yeah. and we've chosen it at a time where we really all should be engaged in Bible study anyway. Yeah. I chose it to help people because we realize everyone's at a different space spiritual. Okay. Yeah. So we, we chose this so persons would have an easier time. And again, this is not just for First Fellowship Charlotte. This is for the uh, Church Without Walls Global. This is with, for a whole lot of churches uh, who participate. Uh, but we, we really want you to consider just for one hour a week, giving, don't eat. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Or... Well, no, don't for an hour, don't eat, don't eat. Now, mm -hmm. I, I've shared with us that for me personally, God has um, required me to fast the entire morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, sometimes that's hard. Like last night, I, I, I was dreaming. I, I got up this morning and I was eating and something said, wait a second, it's not. Right, right. Clock. What are you doing? So this thing is even, and God is even speaking to me in my dreams about the need to fast up to one o'clock on Sundays. You don't have to do that. But I, but I'm telling you what God instructed us to do. Mm -hmm. And if what we want to see is God doing an incredible work in our lives, in one hour, one hour, that's all he's asking, one hour. Now, for some of us, he'll speak to us and tell us, well, I need you to fast for a little longer than that. That's fine. If that's the case, that's the case. But for one hour, just mm -hmm. fast one hour. Amen. So that, that's me and my soapbox uh, before we get started here uh, this afternoon with Bible study. Let's get to where we normally go at this point in Bible study. Are there any questions, any comments, any concerns, any thoughts, any ideas that have arisen from either the sermon you heard Sunday, has arisen from your personal study, your dialogue, conversations with other people that I can answer? And again, if I cannot answer, I'll go study it and I'll bring it back to you next week. Amen. Yeah, Pastor Al, yeah, question. Go ahead, Doc. I guess I'll start off this way. How can we respond to questions like these? And I'm pretty sure uh, some of us, um, many of us have been on the receiving end of a question like this. Question like, like what? Like why, do, yeah. why should we fast? No, nope. here's the question. Oh, okay. But so many religions out there, how do I know which one is, is real or true? Hmm. So many different beliefs, faiths, opinions, ideas, suggestions, things like my friend said, or I heard this or that, I think this or that. Um, I heard that, uh, you know, I, I heard that which church is, is faithful, which is true, which is real. So questions like these, uh, people, well, they ask or inquire about, and the question is directed to us. When I say us, I'm referring to uh, the believers. Naturally, mm -hmm. uh, the believers in Christ uh, are members of various uh, churches, denominations, et cetera, et cetera. 
So when those questions are directed to us, all right, in your opinion, all right, how should we respond? Okay. Um, what people are looking for, so let me tell you, let me help you understand what they're looking for when they ask mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. They're looking for an easy, clear-cut answer mm -hmm. that distinguishes our faith, our Christian faith, from other from other people from other people's other types of faiths uh, faiths and religions, mm -hmm. and the problem with this question is that it's asking for an answer that is much more complicated in yeah. detail yeah. than the question which asked it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, we can say. Well, you should be a Christian because our God is real and the, those other gods are not. But guess what? That's what they think about us too. Mm -hmm. You, we, 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 we can say you should be a Christian because we are about truth, about growth, mm -hmm. about overcoming. Other religions are too. Mm -hmm. So the easy answers to that question are applicable. In fact, there's 13 mainline world religion. They're applicable to all 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now there's all shoots of these, but uh, what is accepted, there's 13 mainline religions in the world. All right. What I do when I am given that question, I don't try to answer it as to why the person asking it should uh, become a Christian. Mm -hmm. I tell them why I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I share with them my mm -hmm. testimony. Mm -hmm. I share with them my witness. I share with them why, what God means to me. Mm -hmm. and, and what having a relationship with him has done for my life. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. Uh, because here's the thing, when you share who God is to you and what the relationship means in your life, mm. even if someone disagrees with you, they cannot tell you you're wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And here's another thing. By giving persons or explaining to what God means to you, what having his relationship with him has meant to your life you're giving them real time, cold, hard data upon what to base their faith. Mm -hmm. okay? So like, for example, um, and maybe it's just me, God is talking to me all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, like I went to Walmart Monday. I got to go back today. Amen. Mm -hmm. These kids are eating me out of the house. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I got to go back to Walmart today. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was at Walmart on Monday. Mm -hmm. And um, I had written down a list of things I needed. But there was something I I'd hadn't written down. And I felt, mm -hmm. saying, you need to get that. And I was right. like, nah. mm -hmm. so, so So reluctantly, I got it. Okay. When I got back to the house, discovered that we didn't have it mm -hmm. okay so so my relationship with god is just not simply that i pastor that i preach that i teach that i minister that i intercede that i lead my relationship with god is such that him and i are having natural everyday conversations that you would have with someone else mm -hmm. and many times in the conversation he's giving me he's directing and guiding me about what i need or what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. okay. So your discussion about what God, so so let me let me continue. All right, before I say that. So for me, God is the air I breathe. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have realized that I have absolutely no existence separate from God. Mm -hmm. I can even remember one night praying that God would protect and keep my kids 
when I'm no longer here and there, here and alive. I understand. Mm -hmm. And the spirit convicted me. The spirit said, what makes you think you can keep and protect and keep your kids right now? Right now, while you're there. Mm -hmm. Hubris made me think that because I'm alive, because I'm their daddy, because I, uh, I, I, me, my, that I, alone, my wife, have mm-hmm. taken steps to provide for them, that yeah. we got this all under control. But the spirit says, in one fell swoop, I can make it so neither one of you can take care of you. Right, sure. The spirit said, in one fell swoop, I can take both of y'all's jobs away. Right, sure. What, how are you going to provide then? Mm-hmm. I hear you. The spirit said, these kids spend at least eight hours away from you every mm-hmm. single day. Yeah. How are you protecting them when they're away from you? Right. You're not. Yeah. You're not. You don't mm-hmm. even know what's going on. Right. I trust that they're learning. I trust that this particular point they both had lunch, but I don't mm-hmm. know if they've actually learning or they've had lunch. It's Lord Jesus. And so what I what that what the spirit reaffirmed as well as convicted me on is not only is God my everything, but God is the people connected to me they're everything too whether they believe it or not Uh, mm -hmm. and since he's my everything Mm -hmm. no i don't have an option of whether or not i will serve him Mm -hmm. but i choose to serve him in gratitude and thankfulness for him being my everything i don't mind getting up and tackling a sermon (laughs) mind to be called i don't mind serving because i realize that uh god has uh done so much for me that i would be remiss not to be to remain continue connected to to the person now to someone i say that to that that problem may not reso- be, be with them. Mm-hmm. It resound with them, That's not right. resonate with them. Mm-hmm. But for someone else, it may. I mean, the most I can tell someone is, why don't you come sit with me in church or when we're together and see if God speaks to you? Here's the thing. This is what I was getting ready to say a little earlier. Your explanation of what who god is and what this relationship with god means to you is going to be different than mine you may have a whole nother perspective and that's fine it's not wrong but what i found is when you answer that question that loaded directed question for an easy answer like that it leaves people with something to think about because they sit there and they do like you're doing, Sean. They go, hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. They may not have a response, but yeah. it leaves them something to think about. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so when we when we are confronted with that question, we shouldn't get upset, shouldn't get in yeah. our feelings, shouldn't feel that we're challenged. Just mm-hmm. tell God what He means to you and your mm-hmm. what your relationship with Him is. Right. Right. Then let God do the work. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, too many times we want to act as if we are, our our names are uh, 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 Sean Jones, no, Christ Sean Jones. Right, I hear you. Christ Al Kennan. There's no title Christ before us. No, we are not the Christ. Therefore, in fact, I was reading this in Wayne Cadero's book yesterday. Hey, Amen. You know I'm a reader. And I was reading this. I want to show you this good book, Leading on Empty. Amen. Amen. And he talks about distinguishing between concerns and responsibilities. Okay. And he makes the, he's saying this in the context of pastors who have developed depression, who have, who've, who've become depressed, clinically depressed. Right, right. He said in his life, he said, can't talk about anybody else, but in his life, what he realized that he was making everybody's concerns his. His. Okay. Personal. Yes. Instead of focusing solely on what's his Mm -hmm. responsibility. It's a difference. You know, uh, Sean, you may be concerned about 
uh, whoever cuts the grass in the neighborhood, them not cutting it right. That's not my concern. Yeah. Or am I taking that concern? And I say, I pray for you. Hopefully God <laughs> gives you direction. That's right. not my your, your concern. Here's another concern that we put upon pastors and, and church. Mm-hmm. Pastor, you haven't done anything to bring anybody into this church. That's not my responsibility. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> My responsibility is to help the church position itself to receive who God is mm-hmm. bringing to the church. But persons come to the church because they and God have had a conversation and they have agreed with God to come to the church. Yes, if I literally lay hands on someone and drag them into the church and sitting them down, I could be prosecuted oh. for kidnapping and battery. Yeah, I hear you. Yes, sir. Because I touched them against their will and I moved them against their will. Even if I don't chain them down, that's still kidnapping. Mm-hmm. So my responsibility is not I know. necessarily <laughs> to bring yeah. people in. My responsibility is to help create an atmosphere, yeah. an environment that people will feel welcomed in and they will want to remain and stay. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pastor, uh, the giving is down. My responsibility is not to write your tithing checks or your offering checks. If I did, that's called stealing. It's called embezzling. (laughs) Both crimes that I can go to jail for. Mm -hmm. What my job to do is, is to help you understand that what God is asking you to give him is what he is a portion of what he's already given you. Yes, sir. That everything you have is because of his mercy. Man. And what he's trying to see is, do you love what I give you more than yeah. you love me who gives it to you? And hopefully as I present that to you, as I give that to you, something in your spirit cuts and it says, you know what? That's right. Why am I tripping? Right. The more I give, the more he gives back to me. Yes, sir. The more I have my old hands open, the more he puts stuff in it. So why am I tripping? Because they're asking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yes, sir. Uh, we, and I'm saying that to say, our job as Christian disciples and stewards is to make disciples. Mm-hmm. It is not to convince persons to come and be yeah. Christian. I know someone said, what's the difference? All right. My job is not to go on a PR marketing campaign to tell you why Christianity is better to, than every other religion in the world. Mm-hmm. My job is to walk in the, in, in the faith and the calling that God has given me mm-hmm. and exemplify, to demonstrate, to model what mm-hmm. faith this Christian faith looks like and what it means and how it applies to our lives in such a way that someone feels invited by the Holy Spirit to come in and join God. Mm -hmm. Because really when we do church members, those calls church members, we're not really asking people to join us. We're asking them to join God because none of us have the power to save, to sanctify, to glorify, to justify. So we're really asking, but we, to get people in, May, may, and to get to answer it, in fact, the best way to answer that question is to tell someone, see how I live. Mm-hmm. Amen. Sure. Now, this is going to cause problems for some people. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because some people ain't living right. <laughs> some people claim to be Christians. Mm-hmm but they're the biggest gossipers and rumor spreaders in the world. Some people can't claim to be Christians, but they don't do a good job of loving their neighbors. Some people claim to be Christians, but they don't go out of their way to help people. Some people claim to be Christians. They won't pray for anybody. And so when people see us, that is a question. Why should I join your religion? Because what they aren't saying is, you haven't done a very good job of, of showing me why your religion is the best religion. I understand. Okay. I mean, look, look, in, the, look in the word. Every time a, a spiritual leader is challenged by someone, uh, a non-believer, as to why they should 
uh, follow Yahweh, follow God, that leader demonstrates, he does something that the the act, not the words, the act convinces people to uh, join, to give themselves to God. Mm -hmm. The act, mm -hmm. even when the act doesn't have anything to do with them, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, the uh, uh, of of uh, Pentecost. That wasn't their doing. That was all the Holy Spirit. That was all Holy Spirit. Okay, but still, the fact that they were able to speak in tongues and persons could hear the, the tongue, right. could mean, interpret yeah. the tongue and hear their own language being spoken, that prompted 3,000 people to give themselves to God, to join God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, right. How are we living? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You know, I, I know some of us can talk a good game. We can easily tell others what God means us and what relationship with him needs for our right. life. But how are we living? Right. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but let me go ahead and say this. Uh -oh. Since we ain't fasting, people and, and guess what? People see the stuff that we post on during the service. They're like, aren't y'all supposed to be fasting? Yeah, they fasting, but I'm gonna have this chicken Caesar salad for lunch. Yes, not telling you not to have Caesar, chicken Caesar salad, but you just showed them that you that you don't even buy into mm -hmm. what we're doing as a group of believers. Right. So why would they want to join yeah. us? Yeah. If what you've shown them is we don't have to do what, what God is telling us. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Okay. It's a good question. I hope I answered it. Yes, you uh, did. Sure. You know, so, amen. Praise God. Are there, are there any other questions that I can answer? Amen. Go ahead, Sean. Blow my mind today. No, not today. That's it. What about you, Sister Carol? You got any questions? No, nah, she says she uh, nothing over uh, her her side of the room either. No, nope. brother Sean, take her to the doctor immediately. Something, I mean, yeah, something, something is wrong. Yeah, wrong. Yeah, <laughs> this is the second Bible study that we yeah. have where she didn't have any questions. Something is wrong. Amen. I'm this afternoon, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Again, if Sister Sharon, if you got a question, jump in. Let me know. Um. This is Sharon. Hi. Hey. Hey, and I just said that I have my mother on this call as well. Okay. Um, ironically, there was a conversation that a coworker and I had last week about the same thing with okay. us being people of the faith or us being Christians. And when they see us responding or behaving in a certain way, especially when we're in the church, mm. um, and that conversation by a statistic that I heard that just prior to and even during this pandemic, so many people have turned away from the church, mm -hmm. that people aren't attending church or participating as they once did. Mm -hmm. And we talking about the fact that there are a lot of us in the church who say that we are people of faith, but the way we act, the way we talk, the way we respond is not reflective of the God that we say we serve or the God that we say we know. Mm -hmm. So when they at us, especially the older ones of us, when they look at us and they see us acting like we don't have good sense or that we truly don't know the God that we say we love and we serve, how can we expect them to do something different when we're not showing them what it's supposed to be like and who we are and how we behave and we want them to come to Christ? Mm -hmm. um, because I heard that, you know, ministers are responsible for the people that they draw to or that they turn away from. But mm -hmm. I said to her, I, people of faith, we too are responsible for the people that we draw to or mm -hmm. turn away from Christ. That's because right. sometimes we're going to be the only people that they get to see or get to know. But we have to be very mindful at all times of how we respond and how we behave because we can certainly keep people away from Christ. Amen. That that's right. That's right. And because you know, you've heard me say this uh in service many times. Every believer is a minister. Mm -hmm. Now, God may not have called you to shepherd a church. That's a particular type of calling. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. But every one of us is a minister by virtue of the Great Commission where it says, go ye make disciples of all you encounter and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Making disciples means that you, at some point you are the teacher. Mm-hmm. The disciples in its basis, bare essence, means student. You are the teacher, which means you are the minister. And and when I mean you, I'm not necessarily talking about you, Sister Sharon. So I don't want you to feel like I'm pointing a finger at you. I'm not. All of us have an obligation to speak, talk, think in a way that glorifies God and exemplifies faith. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Sister Sharon, I will tell you that when the pandemic happened, I got more calls from more members talking about how we going to do this. We can't go to church. We can't worship. And here's the thing, Sister Sharon, at that point, I have been the pastor for two years. Mm -hmm. Every single Sunday that I have been the pastor at First Fellowship Charlotte, we have broadcasted our service over the internet. Amen. What we originally did, we started, I had my iPads and did my old iPads and I would set multiple one up from different places and you know, one would be broadcast one would be recording one would be showing me what's going on. All right. Uh, I, so I could see what was going on. But as I had to tell folks, we've always, at least since I've been the pastor, we've mm-hmm. always offered an online, an online option to, mm-hmm. to worship, which yeah. means this pandemic didn't catch us by mm-hmm. surprise. It didn't catch us off guard because we have we were already doing it before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not only it, it's so. So when it first happened, you know, no one could come in. And so other than maybe five people. So what happened, me, uh, Pastor Leslie, Deacon Rembert, Deacon Charlton, and maybe Deacon Styles, the five of us will come to church and I would just preach to um, 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 empty chairs. Not a problem. When I started the ministry, that's how I started preaching. Okay. Doesn't, does not bother me at all. But bothered me was how quickly we fell out of faith about worshiping Mm -hmm. okay that's what bothered me Mm -hmm. and what i was what i try to get people to understand is if this is what you're saying to me you've already said it to someone else Mm -hmm. i understand as a pastor i'm the last one to get the message (laughs) <laughs> because no because no matter how much i say i my doors open you can talk to me about anything the parking lot committee has this committee meeting first before so they designate someone to come talk to me mm-hmm. i know the parking lot committee has okay. had this meeting mm-hmm. i know that persons have have taken the minutes of that meeting and mm-hmm. they share them with the world so by the time it got to me other people had heard that And what I really was trying to convey to folks, my leaders at that time was, Mm -hmm. wait a second, do you realize you just gave us a black eye? Well, because persons walk away from what they heard are mm -hmm. saying, they don't even believe what they think, what they say. Are they really sitting here thinking that God's church is going to end simply because there's a pandemic? Right, right. Mm -hmm. There's always a pandemic. One tap another, yeah. Something going on. AIDS was a pandemic. Okay. Uh, typhoid, typhoid fever was a pandemic. Spanish fever was a pandemic. The flu, something that we take for granted. We get it. We go home. We get over-the-counter medicine, and we're good in a day or two. That was a pandemic at a time. Did God's church end through any of those? No. So... It gets better. It gets better because I can only talk about First Fellowship. I don't know what someone else's church did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we start having church. I'm preaching the into chairs. Everyone's watching church. <laughs> Cheers. And then the conversation became, well, pastor, we don't figure out some way to get people together. 
We gonna lose people. <laughs> I know, Sean, it's funny. I'm just not laughing at it. It is funny. As, as if now all of a sudden the assembly of the saints, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, is so important. So we decided that we were going to do outside services. This is about mid-spring. We're going to start doing outside services. Yes, sir. Question, well, how are we going to do that? Well, you're going to sit in your car. I'm going to preach. And we're going to have service like that. Amen. What if it gets hot? <laughs> what if it gets cold? Turn the heat on. <laughs> turn your heat on or turn your air condition on. Well, what if people, I said, ain't no one more tired of being out there than me. Because guess what? I'm the one out in the, in the, in the element actually <laughs> asserting myself preaching. Oh, Lord. And so we started doing service. But again, I'm the last one to hear these questions. <laughs> we do it. We go through the summertime. We go through the fall. It gets cold. Well, uh, uh, it can't cold. <laughs> we, 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 we don't know. If we can... You got a heater. What are you talking about? Every step along the way, we acted faithless. And I can say that because I'm, I'm the leader of this group and, 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 and it is what it is. We acted faithless. And then here's the, the mess up thing, because it gets even better. <laughs> Once we were finally able to really start having worship because of the fears of catching coronavirus, right. many people did not come back. Right. And um, Sean will testify to this. Immediately, <laughs> Pastor, we in trouble. Pastor, we got to do something. Pastor, we don't get these folks back. We ain't going to have enough to do. And I had to say, wait a second. Amen. This ministry, no matter what you think, right. was God's creation. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. God allowed it to be started. Amen. God allowed it to be birthed out of First Baptist West. Mm -hmm. God allowed it to grow. God allowed us to move to different locations. God mm -hmm. allowed us to acquire this place. Why would God now mm -hmm. decide to abandon us as a body of believers <laughs> in him? Sure. I mean, let, me, let me make a, a better analogy. Why would I now give up on my babies after I don't spend all this time loving on them, paying for them? Do it. I know, yes, sir. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot tell you how many times you've been there, you've been in service, you watch how many mm -hmm. times you've heard me say, Do not let what you see mm -hmm. distract us from the mission. Amen. The mission is the same. Make disciples of everyone mm -hmm. we encounter. In fact, what you've also heard me say is the coronavirus, the pandemic, God used to prune us. Mm -hmm. That there was some fruit on the vine that was rotten. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, no, no need to sugarcoat it. There was some fruit that was rotten. There were also some fruit that was produced, but never ripened. Then there were some branches that weren't produ producing fruit at all. Oh. Mm -hmm. Instead, what they were doing, they were sucking up value, valuable mm -hmm. nutrients out the mm -hmm. ground needed for the rest of the, the, the tree, shrub, hedge, vine. Mm -hmm. And so guess what God did? This wasn't mm -hmm. by accident. That right. pandemic was intentional by yes. God to prune us mm -hmm. so that what we would have were persons mm -hmm. that were serious about doing ministry, that we're not afraid to get up out the pew mm -hmm. and do ministry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah, I, I, I understand exactly what the people are saying. Mm -hmm. That we don't do a good, we know we do not do a good job of showing faith, mm -hmm. at least not in God. Mm -hmm. And what's ironic, we can show faith in other things. 
Mm -hmm. The 15th is coming up on Monday. I bet you it's a whole bunch of folks going to have faith that they're going to get paid. Because we already saying, if I walk up there the 15th and I ain't been paid, I'm turning this whole place upside down. Right. <laughs> come, on, come on, tell the truth. Shame the devil. Right. Those of us who are married, I know good and well, he ain't got no heifer and no hole up in my house. <laughs> I know good and well she ain't brought no ninja into my house. I hear you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I know good and well mm -hmm. my child is not acting a plum fool out of this street. Mm -hmm. I hear you. <laughs> You're speaking faith right then. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. we, I'm sitting in a chair. Brother Sean, you can't see him. But he's sitting on the couch. Oh, yeah. Uh, a love seat. So yes. Carol is sitting on the couch. You're sitting in a chair. Your mother's probably sitting in a chair. <laughs> Ain't none of us ask God before we set our rooter tutors down there whether oh, or not the chairs would hold us up. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Here's another one. Many of us will hop right in our cars. We have cars. We don't even ask God if he's going to let it start. We assume that he's going to let it start. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who got up this morning talking about, oh, God, I hope that the, uh, the <laughs> electricity is on. The lights come on when I flip the switch. I hope that there's clean running water. I hope that I got something clean to wear in the closet. I hear you, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We got up complaining about having to get up early. <laughs> not early. thanking God. Walking around in faith, but then when it's time for us to model it in other areas to demonstrate, we do not do it. Do yes, that's why people do not want to come be part of us because we do such a terrible job at modeling faith. Amen. And, 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 and I can sense, Sister Sharon, that it is bothering you. If it bothers you, excuse my language, it pisses me off. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Because in my mind, the last people that we should have to ever say anything to about modeling faith are the people that call themselves by God's name. Yeah, yes, Lord. Okay, let me calm down. I'm getting loud. I see my wife's not here. She ain't on, on one of her meetings. So she ain't here to reel me in saying, hey, baby, you're being loud. I can hear you. <laughs> People on my call can hear you. Uh, amen. So she ain't here. So she don't left me alone. So I, 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 I got no one to check me. <laughs> but it bothers me. Mm -hmm. It bothers me. Sure. So I'm going to testify to this. I was told recently mm -hmm. that if our music ministry could improve, certain people would come back to church. So basically, you're telling me that these persons are only coming to church because they want to be entertained. No, Pastor. I was like, nope, that's what you're telling me. Because if they were here to be disciples, to yes, learn, sir. they would care less. I know. Well, they wouldn't care less, but they would be more accommodating and realizing that our music ministry is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Hell, you used to only have me singing. Oh, brother. Say it again, brother Sean. Oh, brother. Rough on the ears, sir. Rough on the ears, yes. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> we had to have praise and worship. We had to have worship. No one else would get up and lead it. And so guess what? Me and my flat and sharp voice was up there trying to sing. Begging people if you can sing, and we have people sitting in the in the pews that could sing. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They wanted to be served, mm -hmm. not right. to serve. Amen. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be fed the food, mm -hmm. not responsible for cooking it, preparing mm -hmm. it, and serving mm -hmm. it. Yes, Lord. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I stay in my feelings about this. Well, As a kid, say you and your feelings. Mm -hmm. I stay in my feelings about this. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing: mm -hmm. Pastor Leslie shouldn't even when we, when, even when folks show up, she hadn't shouldn't have to pump a, pump us up. 
Amen. Yes. And, and, and command us to praise God. We mm -hmm. should we should bring praise Thanks. into the house with us. <laughs> We should be so happy that the Lord has allowed us another chance to come into the house of God that we are, in fact, we we in the pew should be beating the praise team. Mm -hmm. well, we should be like, you can't sing this song better than me because you don't know my testimony. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been up against. You don't know how often life has pushed me in the corner and bloodied my nose and blacked my eye and broke my arm and broke my leg and lacerated my body and left me for dead, starving with nothing. And my God showed up, healed me, brought me back, and made me look better than I did before. Amen. Mm -hmm. In fact, the truth is, no pastor in the world should ever be able to preach because the people are in, in such a place of praise. Mm -hmm. No pastor. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking all of us. We yes, shouldn't be able to preach because the people that we've been sitting to minister to uh, are so thankful, so grateful for God's grace and mercy, his demonstrated love, that we never get a chance to get up. I hear you, sir. I hear you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yeah. But, but, but what happens? We come in there with an attitude. We come in there mad because things ain't going our way. We come in there upset because we were going to wear this outfit and we looked over at such and such, a brother such and such, and they got it on. And now we in a funk. And here's Pastor Leslie trying to pump. Here's a praise. What? Go ahead. I don't have, I don't have to go see, listen to Bible study. <laughs> Amen. Oh. Praise God. Praise God. But we, 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 and, and then what happens when I get up to preach, I've mm -hmm. got to tell you when your praise moment is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How many times have you, right. how many times have you heard me say, oh, see, you don't know when to praise. Mm -hmm. I say everything. That's because, that's because yeah. we're, we're so not in a place mm -hmm. of showing God gratitude well, that we're missing these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And to the outside world, why would I want to come be part of a place that's so sad and melancholy? The world right. is sad and melancholy. Amen. Yes, sir. Why would I want to do that? I know. See, here's the thing. If we want a different result, what how's the saying go, Sean? We got to do a different thing. Right. Yes, sir. We right. cannot do the same thing oh, expecting a different <laughs> result. Right. <laughs> That's the clinical definition of insanity. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we're operating in insanity when we want to keep doing nothing, which is mm -hmm. what we've been doing. Nothing. A different outcome. And expect yeah. a positive, different result. We got to get up and do something. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I shared this at a, a, a during a conference. If you notice when I send emails out to everyone, no, do you realize how I address them to you? Brothers, sisters, and friends of First yeah. Fellowship Charlotte. You know mm -hmm. why I say that? I could just say, hey, family. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm hoping mm -hmm. is that you are forwarding the emails to other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping you are forwarding them to them, inviting them to take part in our Bible study. They ain't got to go nowhere. They can sit at home mm -hmm. and look. And everyone's got an electronic device. Everyone's got a flat screen TV now. Mm -hmm. You can sit here and watch this in the privacy of your home or yes. at your desk or in your car or on your phone. Mm -hmm. When I send out the emails about worship service, you know we haven't worshiped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> short, short of inclement weather. Really? Every Sunday we're having worship. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday. Unless something comes up that is beyond our control and we cannot... So why do you think I'm sending you, and I mean all of us by this, these mm -hmm. emails? Because I want you to mm -hmm. share them. And here's the thing. You ain't got to do a whole lot of talking. All you got to do is hit the forward button. <laughs> Type in someone's email address and say, hey, I was thinking about you. Yeah. We're having church on Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to personally invite you. Blessings. Bye. You ain't even got to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. That's how that's how impersonal email can be. But guess what we do? 
mm-hmm. see the emails I send, and many times we don't even open them. Mm-hmm. We go right to the to the delete folder. Well, know how I know? Because later on, when you're asking me questions, it's clear that you didn't open up the email because the answer was right in the email. Yeah. <laughs> As someone said to me, well, I don't want to read all that. That's fine. You don't have to. But no, but under, please understand, when you don't understand, know what's going on, that's your fault. It's not mine. It's yeah. Amen. And then we want people to join this mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can hide. It's hard half time getting the Holy Spirit to join this mess, and then we want other people to come join. All right, y'all got me preaching in here, preaching and fussing. Amen. I can see it now. I'm gonna get ten calls. <laughs> At least ten. <laughs> At least ten. Ten calls from ten people who 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 chose not to be on this Bible study, who will, who will watch the playback and take issue with what I'm saying instead of looking inwardly and saying, "What can I do? Go ahead. <laughs> do something different that's going to have a lasting change." Amen. Amen. It's all Sean's fault, Sister uh, Sharon. Sean asked the wrong question and that got you started, and got that got me started. Amen. Amen. That's how them wildly deacons are. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So Amen. so I, I I that's my response, my long response to your short statement. Right. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> I I hope that that uh if not, you let me know. I've tried to do a better job. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Check it out. We got about 15 minutes. If there's okay. no more questions or comments or anything that I can t- Amen. Then let me do this. Let me jump into, let's at least jump into our lesson for a little bit. Okay. Um, amen. We didn't have Bible study last week, so I feel like I, I, I got a little extra for you today. Amen. Praise God. When we last were together for Bible study, we were at this place right here where um, uh, Pastor Mark Batterson in chapter three of the Circle Maker um, at or states that the miracle at Jericho is a microcosm of how to pray. Mm. I'll be honest with you. When he first said it, I was I, I did kind of scratch my head. Mm-hmm. You talking about? Yeah. Because the plain language, yes, we're assuming that they're praying as they're walking around the mm-hmm. walls of Jericho. <laughs> the praying plain language puts more emphasis on the walking and the shouting mm. than the praying. And I could not help but wonder if we do that because it takes nothing to walk. Mm-hmm. You, think I, you think I'm lying? Count how many times you're going to get up off that couch today while you're watching your favorite TV show to go get snacks. <laughs> Count how many times you're going to walk to the restroom. Count how many times you're going to walk to another room to get something because you realize you got something in there. And when you come back, you're going to realize you got to walk back because you left something else in that room. <laughs> many times we walk without even thinking about it. Right, that's true, yeah. Same thing with shouting. We ain't got no problem shouting. Mm-hmm. Let it be the right subject. We'll shout all day long. Mm-hmm. But the, I think the difficult part the difficult action in this story about the Israelites' capture and seizing of Jericho lies in the praying. Mm-hmm. Because they were instructed not to say anything verbally. Mm-hmm. And let's go ahead and be for real. It's hard to get Negroes to do anything, <laughs> especially if you're not going to let them talk. Well, because <laughs> we Negroes feel like we've got to give you our opinion about everything. Yeah, I know, Lord Jesus, Amen. Pastor, Pastor, we sang too many songs. Pastor, we didn't sing enough songs. Pastor, why you always have uh, the deaconess take the white sheet off the Holy Communion table? Why can't the deacons, the men deacons, do that? <laughs> Pastor, why you chose this book? Why ain't you use just using the Bible? Pastor, why you just use the Bible? Why don't you use some other 
we 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 got something to say about all the time. So keeping us quiet is a major task. <laughs> major. Well, mm-hmm. and I believe because because again these these are these are black folks coming out of Egypt has spent four hundred years in Egypt. They black too. <laughs> they black too. Okay. <laughs> let, 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 let's be for real. Joseph took an Egyptian wife and had kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very possible his eleven bro- his youngest brother didn't have a wife, so I'm sure he took an Egyptian wife because he probably did what his older brother did. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Joseph's older brothers, when they got down there, saw, saw how beautiful black women are, took mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five wives because mm-hmm. they got to grow. Mm-hmm. They got to grow. Remember, the, 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 we talked about this uh, at, at, at church. The assignment was is to grow. Mm-hmm. Right. We talked about the, the purpose, the, the prophecy, and the, the assignment was to multiply. Okay. So guess what? You, I, I ain't no biologist, but I know enough about biology. <laughs> anytime you miss any race with, with black, mm-hmm. the product is black. That's because black Black as an ethnicity is the most dominant biological gene among humans than any other. That's why uh, some of our white brothers and sisters, when they interact with black folks, their mm-hmm. children do not look white. Right. That's true. Or black. Mm-hmm. Right. So all these men and all these women taking Egyptians, husbands, and wives many of who are coming into the Israelite faith. By the time they get to Jericho, they black. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Them Negroes. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to keep them quiet, you got to give them an assignment while they are walking around (laughs) the walls for six, seven days. You got to give them something to do Mm -hmm. because again, you know us. (laughs) Now, Jesus, I didn't just go out and buy these expensive sandals for you to be out here walking me around a wall all day long. In fact, why am I even walking around the wall? It's a wall. Why don't we go through the gate? They got an entrance in the wall. Why we got to walk around the wall? And whose bright idea is this? Is this Moses' idea? Bad news is here. Amen. Or, or is that that new boy, uh, uh, J- Joshua? You know what? I don't even like Joshua because he ain't even the kind of the man, the leader that Moses was. I want to go back to be under Moses' leadership. That's right. Yes, sir. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. But it had to be given an assignment. And I believe the assignment was to be praying to God. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> when God let me get to that point, it made mm-hmm. sense why mm-hmm. Pastor Mark is saying that mm-hmm. the miracle at Jericho is a microcosm of how to pray. Mm-hmm. Well, it not only reveals that they performed this particular miracle, the way now reveals the it's just it should say the way um okay feels the way that this particular miracle is performed. I don't know why it's so bad. My English is so bad right now. It also establishes a problem to follow. Mm -hmm. Check this out. We We may not have cities to seize and conquer anymore, Mm -hmm. but we do have city-sized problems. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And many of our city-sized problems are so well entrenched, mm-hmm. so dug in to our lives that they aren't just problems, they're strongholds. Mm-hmm. And every de- halfway decent stronghold makes sure that it brings smaller strongholds to be part of it. Why? Mm-hmm. To form a barrier between us and it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So me and, a, me and another pastor were talking last night. We were talking about a person who's addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. And the family members have indicated that they don't like how he behaves when he's high. Mm-hmm. I'm like, of course you wouldn't like how he behaves when he's high. He's high. 
if you want to change the behavior, see how he behaves, that's the small stronghold. That ain't, mm -hmm. the, that ain't the problem. The problem mm -hmm. is he's addicted to a, a, a narcotic. Right. That's if you want to change how he behaves, get that's him that. off the narcotic. There you go. Yes. Sir. Get him treatment to break his drug addiction. Mm -hmm. Ain't no need to, for us to be fussing at our you young black kids. You so stupid. You can't figure out what one plus one equals two. Yes, Lord. But you know what? If we ain't creating a conducing, a conducive I, learning yeah. environment yeah. for them, no, they ain't going to learn it. Mm -hmm. We know the schools ain't. Mm -hmm. Many of these white teachers do not believe we should be in class to begin with. Mm -hmm. They think they're wasting their time educating us. So they ain't giving us any extracurricular help. And when they do give it, it's because we have to ask it. So if they come in home and there's not a dedicated time set aside to do homework, there's not a dedicated time that the TV goes off. There's not a dedicated time where they are reading with you. There's not a dedicated time where they're reviewing their math homework with you. No, they ain't going. I know it's bad English, but no, <laughs> they ain't going to know what one plus one equals. Ain't no, ain't no need to sit here and be mad that they don't know it. That's a consequence. The problem is you haven't created a conducive environment. It'd be different if you create this environment and your kids just ain't gonna try to do any work. Mm -hmm. and learn. That's different. Jesus. But we're letting YouTube, uh, the internet, the TV, hey. social hey. media educate our babies. And we're, we're trying to figure out why they're dumb as bricks. Mm -hmm. Because social media, YouTube, and the internet doesn't have anything to teach them. A lot, at least not teach them properly. Properly, yeah. Whatever we're up against is well entrenched, well well enmeshed in our lives. And not only that, that it has created a barrier wall. And if we are going to break down that barrier wall and seize our lives back from these strongholds, right, then right. we have to follow the pattern that is established here in Joshua. We're going to have to get to the point where we shut our mouths. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, you just can't call everyone and a mama to tell them about your problems. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of this too. I'm, I'm not exempt from this. Mm -hmm. some things you're going to have to keep it between you and God in fact the, if you want to talk to anyone about this that's mm -hmm. what you spend your time praying about mm -hmm. I told God last night in no, un, un, no uncertain terms God I hate this mess and that ain't the mess ain't the word I use dealing with a particular situation I'm sick and tired of this mess mm -hmm. yes Lord Oh, my God is big enough to handle me venting. Mm -hmm. wow. So big. It didn't hurt his feelings. <laughs> because because here's the thing. The, 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 the legal prohibition in Torah is not to use profane language. The legal mm -hmm. prohibition in cur Torah is not to curse God's name. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not curse the name uh, in the name of God. Or use God's name in vain. That's the, that's the commandment. It doesn't say not to use profane language. That is a symptom of of, of Victorian uh, reimaging of Christianity that occurred in the 16, 1700s. hundreds. <laughs> But again, in my time circling this stronghold, circling this problem, I didn't spend time calling up everybody and their mama. I took it right to the one, the only one that can deal with it. Yes, Lord. Maybe you, and I mean everyone, I'm saying as a blanket statement, maybe you need to use that time while you're circling the walls to be indicating to God what it is you need God to do. Yes, Lord. And here's another thing about this pattern. Uh, notice 
that every day, at least for six days, the Israelites were required to walk around the entire diameter of the wall, regardless of how large the wall was, that diameter was. This is a city. Historians believe at a minimum there was 150 to 200,000 people living in this city. <clears throat> Let me give you an understanding of how big that is. That's Concord. That's Gastonia. Okay. okay. That's Birmingham, Alabama. That's um, Winston-Salem. cities so large that we can't even picture their diameter without using a map. In fact, we don't even know what the diameter, we don't even know what the boundaries of these cities are without a map. That's how big Jericho was. Because you got to realize they didn't have construction technology like we do. They didn't know they can go up. They only went out. So it's probably larger than our cities. Mm. And guess what? They were required, mm. Israelites were required to walk around the outside of these walls of Jericho completely one time for six days and then seven times for on, on the seventh day. Again, we're talking about Negroes. I can't get many Negroes for health, re health reasons, to park at the back of the parking lot and use that walk into the grocery store as exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. I keep telling folks, all we need to do is walk for 30 minute days. A lot of our health will be much so much better. Mm -hmm. I, said, I can't do that. I said, you don't know my time. I'm busy. Oh yeah, you're busy. Mm -hmm. Too busy to walk, but not too busy to watch your shows, or read your book, to talk talk to your girls, to go mm -hmm. to whatever. We make time for what we want. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. And you know, black folks. Mm -hmm. After the day of us walking and marching is over. That's what my grandmama did during the civil rights. I ain't walking and marching nowhere. I don't work too hard for this Range Rover and this Mercedes. If anything, I'm driving where I got to go. Again, not realizing the only reason why you have that car mm -hmm. in the first place is because of the God that gave it to you. So, mm -hmm. What I'm saying to you and saying to us is that however large the problem is, and remember, many of us have city-sized problems, we've got to be intentional about walking the entire diameter of the of the around the problem praying without take without doing less than so mm -hmm. the is 26 miles walking 24 is not good enough amen, amen. yes sir because you yes, sir. again you know us i've been out here for six hours I was, I don't walk 24 miles i'm sure god can get me for the last two he know my heart that sounds familiar. Yeah. I keep telling us, watch when you say that because God does know your heart. <laughs> you're right. He knows you're lying. He knows you never had the intention to do this. So that probably is the last thing you want to say about God. God knows your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if the diameter around your problem is 26 feet. You've got to walk all 26 feet and you've got to keep walking. And that, here's another thing. You just can't do it on the first day and say, well, I've done enough. I've got that. I, 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 I don't need to do anymore. God saw me. You know my heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. He you know my heart. My heart all right. We have to keep walking mm. these prayer circles around the problems in our lives for as long as God has mandated us, yes, well, us to do it. Mm -hmm. I started saying this Sunday, I'm going to get back into it on this Sunday coming up. Many of what we're praying for has a lot of moving part. They're big deals. Mm -hmm. It's going to take him some time to do 
what he needs to do. But I didn't even get a chance to say this, say to us, for some of us, we won't even realize this in our lifetime. God told David that he that he needed David to build a, a house for him, but then told David, you ain't going to do it. You won't live long enough to see it happen. Told Moses, I'm going to take the people into the promised land. But Moses didn't see it. Didn't see it at all. You know? Paul and the, the first apostles, they didn't live long enough to see the church look like it does right now. They wouldn't even recognize the church right now. Yeah. So it's quite possible whatever it is you're praying for it may not be answered in your yeah. lifetime. That's right. But you keep circling completely until God does answer it. Yes, sir. Because I'm willing to bet you that if we keep praying, keep circling as we're praying, there's some other things that God's going to do for us in the interim. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know, know I'm looking for my 2023 Porsche 911. GT3 uh, Touring, black on black on black. Uh, There's nice. no need for me to go down to Hendrix Porsche mm -hmm. and pick one up mm -hmm. if I first don't get my credit together. Amen. I hear you. Oh, yeah. That's true. Because I'm going to pay extra. I'm going to pay an increased interest because mm -hmm. of the credit. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sir. Also, I would like to get to the point where if I do decide Mm -hmm. to go get the car, I can write a check for it. I hear you, sir. Amen. Now, we're talking about a car that that starts off about $175,000. I hear you, sir. Amen. I know someone sitting here saying, you may not be sitting on the live call, you're watching the playback, look at Pastor Al, he's being unreasonable. No, I'm coming <laughs> to those things as, as, that are not as if they were until they become Thank the you. The mouth of God's ears. Yes, Lord. The difference between the, uh, the one who's able to do it and the one who's not is the one who believes by faith that yes, all Lord. things are possible with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't you believe? Yes, Lord. For Jesus. nothing shall be impossible for God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you. It may not happen tomorrow, may not happen next week, but I've mm -hmm. got I got confidence that yes, as long as I'm breathing, I'm just a few minutes away from experience. So whatever that few minutes looks like, according well, to God, yeah, God. Like, it's going to happen. I remember people told me I, I, I would never pastor. I, look what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. People told me I'd never be a lawyer. Look what mm -hmm. I do. Amen. People told me, oh, you'll never be able to teach at a seminary. Guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm teaching. Yes, Lord. Jesus people, told, Lord. people told me, oh, you may God keep you from having kids. I've got three of them. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All my life, people have been telling me what I cannot do. Mm -hmm. My God has been showing me that what I can do is not contingent upon what they think. It's mm -hmm. about what he says. Yes, Lord Jesus, thank you. <laughs> and so, since he's already told me he wants to put me in a place of being credit free, uh, he's already iterated to me, I'm going to make that scripture that, that you're the lender, not the borrower, then that means borrowing is not in my future. I hear you, sir. Amen. And since he said it's not in my future, then I cannot be so disobedient as to go borrow. To get it, yes. <laughs> now, that's not to say I may, there may never come a time I have, but again, I'm going to wait on God to say, okay, in this situation, yeah, go ahead and borrow that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hear you, sir. <clears throat> because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it to you so you pay it back so fast. They don't get nearly the interest that they're hoping to get on it. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm praying. I'm Jesus. praying that. I'm, that. I'm circling that. I circle that every day. But here's another thing. I also circle every single day that God would not only forgive us as a church of our own Jesus, thank God. God would find value in us to do an incredible, impossible work through us. Jesus, thank God. Every night, mm -hmm. every time I pray, yes, every Lord. time someone asks me, what can I pray for you about? I yes, put us there. 
Because again, I know what it looks like. I can count. Yes, Lord. May not be able to do calculus very well, but I can do simple math. Amen. I've, got yeah. enough, I've got enough fingers and toes to count everyone that comes to service. Amen. But yes, I sir. just I just see something that many people don't. Amen. Yes, sir. And what I see is God's manifestation of a promise, his answer to a prayer. That's why I am stressing as I am the need for us to fast. Yes, Lord. If we fast, God will respond. Yes, Lord. And respond in such a way that we'll find ourselves not ready for the response. That's Please. a problem. That's a problem I really want to have. Don't mind that having that problem. Yeah. yeah I, 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 again, I don't mind making so much money that I can't sit down and just count it all at one time. I, I don't mind that problem. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't mind having to count only a set a set today, count another set tomorrow, count Amen. another set the next day, and be Great. counting for a long time because I got so much. I don't mind that problem. Man, yes, sir. I don't mind having to make a choice between am I going to take my Porsche and going to take my Lamborghini and going to take my Ferrari and going to take my Range Rover. I don't mind having that choice. I I, I can live with that choice. It ain't going to kill me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind having the choice of living a blessed life. Oh, oh my God. God, you're blessing me again. What Please. are you thinking? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind having, having to, no. no. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't mind this obligation to pray. Because what it's going to do is it's going to give us a problem that we don't mind having. Mm -hmm. Well, mm. 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 <laughs> okay, I, I stole the extra five minutes, six minutes from you uh, today, and I did that because we didn't have Bible studies last week. Um, here's the thing: I know we're not going to have Bible study this week coming up on the seventeenth reason why I know that is because I will be in Dayton teaching at the seminary as well as getting prepared for graduation on the 20th. So since we already know that we're not going to have Bible study next mm -hmm. week, Amen. Let's, let's prepare ourselves to come back together on the 24th, or we're going to have Bible study on the 24th. Okay. Okay. And we're going to trust and believe that as we uh, in this time of sharing, in this time of teaching, that the Lord God Almighty is going to um, allow this word to resonate with us, allow us to uh, really soak it in and become better Christians, better stewards, better disciples, better servants. Amen. Amen. But let, let me ask this question. Are there any prayer concerns that we can lift up? No. Okay. No, Amen. No, not to be no. Okay. No, no. okay. Amen. Then here, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you for this day, for this is a day that you have made, God. We are glad we are rejoicing in it. Father God, thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for speaking to us and through us. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for the answers. Thank you for the instructions. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you, God, for doing everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, and everything you will do to enable us to become the people that bring you glory, that bring you honor, that bring you praise. Father God, the truth is we are all wrestling with something. Yes. We're all dealing with something. We're all mm -hmm. up against something. Lord, Jesus, None of us have escaped the something mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Some issue, some problem, some trouble, mm -hmm. some predicament, some trial, some tribulation, some hurt, some harm, some injury, some death has mm -hmm. impacted yes, all of us. And what we need right now, God, is for you mm -hmm. to help us deal with that. Thank you for giving us a model in the way that the Israelites 
prayed, the, the Israelites captured Jericho, the time of prayer, the circling, the uh, determination, the unwillingness to give up. Thank oh. you, God, for that. And God, we pray that as we uh, emulate it, as we uh, copy it, as we duplicate it and replicate it in our own lives, that God, you will let us experience the same kind of success of bringing these walls down and capturing our lives back from the problems that have become strongholds. Father God, we pray for our church family. Praise Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> We pray forgiveness of sins Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. And, a, and atonement for our wrongdoings. Well, yes, Lord yes. Pray, God, that you would uh, find purpose in us and that, God, you allow us to accomplish and achieve purpose. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord God, Jesus. we pray right now that we would walk away all knowing, all of us knowing that we are ministers called yes. minister to other people. Yes. God, grow our ministry. Bring people through those doors yes. that want to be discipled. Bring yes. people through those doors that want to be part of a fellowship, a communion, and a community. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. God, do this not just for First yes. Fellowship Charlotte, but do this for churches around yes. the world. Yes. We pray that prayer request for all churches, God. Yes. Yes. We believe your church is a vehicle upon yes. which you will yes. be impossible in this world. Now, Father God, we're going to get busy enjoying this day that you have made. We pray, God, that you will bless us, that you will love us, that you will keep us and never leave us, that you'll do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Well, you, you, you three have a blessed uh, day to everyone that's on Facebook Live. Yep. Have a blessed day, and we look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday morning. All right. Yes, sir. Take care. All right. Bye bye now. Bye bye now.